Hi, if you're in the market for a toaster and you're not really sure what to go for, then you're not on your own because there are a lot to choose from on the market. So what I've done is I've come up with 10 things to consider before buying a toaster. So let's have a look. Just before I start, all I'd normally say is please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, what I normally do is I talk about household appliances, uh, things like small domestics like these, vacuum cleaners, washing machines, there's a whole range of things I talk about. So although this list is in no particular order, the first one is probably the most common thing that people think about, and that's the number of slices that the toaster can accommodate. For the majority of toasters, they tend to be either two or four slices. So this is just a, an example of a two slice toaster. So as it says, you can get two slices in there. And an example of a four slice toaster, like that. Now for the majority of people, either a two or four slice would be okay. There are a lot of others on the market. There are some three slice, and some six and eight, 12 slice. So there's a huge range of uh, the number of slice toasters around, but for the majority of the market, then two or four is pretty standard. Now, I suppose the main things to consider are the number of people in the household. If you're a single person living on your own and you don't eat much toast, then something like a two slice would normally be okay. If you have got a family and if you like doing things like egg on toast, then something like a four slice toaster would be better because what you don't want to be doing is buying a two slice toaster because it's a bit cheaper uh, and then having to wait for everyone's breakfast to, to be made because you only bought a two slice toaster. So we'll see on this toaster that the, the direction of the toast slots are front to back. And I must say this is pretty standard now. A lot of manufacturers have chosen to go this route, especially on a four slice toaster. Uh, you will find on some other toasters that uh, on this one, for example, that these go left to right. You can find on some four slice toasters that rather than having four individual slots, you'll just have two larger slots. Now that can pay dividends depending on the size of the bread that you're putting in, uh, but that's something else to consider. So the way the toaster's laid out can lead quite nicely into number two on the list, and that's the size of the toaster. Now, hopefully for a lot of people, you think about the size of it before you buy it. Uh, that makes a huge difference because especially if you live in quite a small kitchen and it's gonna be out all the time, then you want to make sure you've got space on your worktop. So just to give you an idea, so on this Bosch toaster, uh, the width on that is around 29 centimeters, or around 11 and a half inches. Uh, compared to this one, this is a Morphe Riches one that we do really well with. And if you're measuring it, the width of it, then you're looking at around 16 centimeters or just under six and a half inches for that one. So it does make a huge difference. And clearly on the four slice toasters, then they will be bigger. But that's something else to think about, the size of the toaster. Now, number three in the list, and I suppose again, this is gonna be really high as a priority, is going to be the color of the toaster. Now, this is a Morphe Riches one that we do. It's a sage green in color. And the added advantage of this one is it does have a matching kettle to go with it. Now, some people will buy them as a matching pair they buy them at the same time. Uh, other people are not too fussed because if you put your toaster away in a cupboard after you've used it, then it's probably not quite as important. But that's something else to think about. So the, there's a huge range of colors. So this is just a standard white toaster. Uh, clearly it's a no frills one. Uh, and then you go to the other end of the market. This is a, a really nice Bosch one. It's a copper. Color, so that's that's done really well for us. This is quite a new color to their range. Something else to think about is if you're going for a stainless steel toaster, especially a polished finish as opposed to a matte finish, then just consider fingerprints on it. Uh, what you can find is if you do get greasy fingerprints on the toaster, especially if you don't keep it clean, then it can start look, to look a bit unsightly after a while. The other thing to think about, just while on the subject of colors, is consider where it's going to sit. So also when you're looking at the colour of the toaster, then look at appliances in the kitchen. Uh, if you have got a, say, a stainless steel oven that it's going to sit next to, then you might want to match it up. So number four is, does the toaster have wide slots? And what I mean by that is, if you're going to cook things like crumpets or very wide bread, then what you want to do is you want to make sure that the toaster can accommodate it. On this one, for example, this has got pretty wide slots. So if you have got, uh, again, things like uh, pretty thick bread that you, you like to toast or big crumpets then you want to make sure that everything will fit in okay there's nothing worse than having your new toaster 
matches with your oven, fits in the space, and then you find that you can't fit your crumpets in. Now at number five, and I know it's not really exciting, but it's how easy is the toaster to keep clean? Uh, for a lot of toasters, like this one, it has something called a crumb tray at the bottom. Uh, it's something I normally try and show people, and the reason I tend to show people there, especially in a showroom, is because if, if you are, if it's easy to do, then you're a lot more likely to do it a lot more often. So on this one you've got the, the one crumb tray just there. Uh, on this one, the Morphe Richards four slice toaster, then you've actually got two crumb trays at the back here. So both of those they will just pull out. So just have a look out for a toaster that's got either one or two crumb trays. Uh, because it can make life a lot easier, uh, it just saves having to turn the toaster upside down over your sink and having to get a brush or something in there to keep it clean. Uh, you might have to do that anyway, but at least if you've got the crumb trays and you can get rid of the majority of the crumbs. Now number six is does the toaster have a high lift function? And what I mean by that, and I'll show you on this toaster, is that if you've got say a, a small crumpet or a very small piece of toast, then it can be really frustrating that when it's cooked that you go to get it out and you can't quite get in there. If it's not quite tall enough that you can reach it straight away then either people end up burning the fingers because you're touching the metal at the top or even worse putting a knife in there to try and get it out. And the way to tell is when it's stationary like that when you press the lever up then it just lifts it a little bit up and that can really help just to raise it up a touch so that when your toast is finished then it's a lot safer just to go and grab it. Number seven, does the toaster have a reheat or defrost function? Now, I know for a lot of people it's not hung in the priority list for those two options, uh, but if you do want to defrost a piece of bread, then you might find that having a, a defrost option on, on the toaster is actually a really good option. It doesn't necessarily cook it, all it will do is defrost it. So a classic use of the reheat option is you've been cooking breakfast for everyone, you realise you popped the toast down a little bit too early. Uh, now, because it's sat in the toaster for a couple of minutes, it's almost cold. So rather than having to cook it again, uh, if the toaster did have a reheat option, then you just pop it down, pop the reheat, and then it just warms it through again. So that can be a really good feature to look out for. Number eight is how controllable is the toaster? And what I mean by that, if this is a fairly standard layout on this Bosch one, so you've just got the control dial on the front there, so it goes up from one to six, and clearly you set that for how long you want the bread to be down. And it's really trial and error. I suppose the first couple of goes will always be a bit of a guess because they do vary between each toaster as far as how much it will cook. Uh, but so on the Bosch one, it goes from one to six. On this one, the Morphe Richards, then it's on the sliding scale here. So it's quite a different layout. And then as you come over to this one, it goes up from one to seven. As you go to some of the higher end toasters, there are some with things like digital displays, and that will give you a countdown timer as to how long the toast will be in for. So there's a lot of different ways that these are controlled. So at number nine, have a look out for any other functions that the toaster might have. And these include things like bun warming racks. Uh, with those, they're little, uh, like a little wire mesh that sits on top of the toaster, it, well, they'll just normally clip on. Unfortunately, I've not got one here to show you, uh, but we have had toasters in the past where they've had them on top, and they, as I say, they just clip on top, and they can be useful just to, for warming things through, so you don't have to necessarily put them into the slots. There are quite a few other functions, things like bagel settings, so you might not necessarily want to toast both sides of the bagel. Uh, so just have a look out for other functions that the toaster might have, because you might find there might be something really useful. Number 10 on the list, and this goes really into a bit of a two-parter, and that's the warranty and the price of the toaster. Now, the warranty on most toasters tend to be either one or two years. That's pretty standard. Some manufacturers do offer a slightly longer warranty of three or possibly five years, and that really depends on the price of the toaster. Uh, what you'll find is if you're paying something like 10 or 15 pounds for a basic toaster like that, then you're not gonna get a five-year warranty with it. Uh, you will find that prices do vary a huge amount. As I say, you can start off from as little as sort of eight to 10 pounds. Uh, but then as you go higher up in the range, then you can go into several hundred pounds. 
I hope you found it useful, the 10 things to consider before buying a toaster. I know for some people you might know all of those things, but for others it might just be a reminder, or you might have just picked up one or two things. Uh, all I'd normally ask is please subscribe to my channel, press the thumbs up button, and leave any comments below. I normally ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video itself. Also, if you think I have missed something, because uh, I'm sure there are lots of other things to consider when you're buying a toaster, if you think I have missed something, then just pop it in the comments. Or if you have got any questions on toasters, then just again pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.